two IPOs, uh, which was uh, going on, Indian Railway Finance Corporation and Indigo Pain. And uh, they are meeting international fund managers, domestic fund managers, anchor placement is going on, book build issues are going on. And uh, Santosh uh, is an uh, expert on financial reporting uh, with a deep knowledge on so many accounting standards. And incidentally, uh, Santosh has decided to do a deep dive and practical examples of IRSC and also the pain sector, including Asian pains, uh, real life example will be discussed in a deep dive today. Santosh. Uh, can I request you to share a few thoughts? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Manoji. And good morning, everyone. As uh, Mr. Narendra alluded to, that all these business models that we have seen, uh, especially in uh, IRFC, which, will, which is heavily dependent on leasing arrangements, I think the financial reporting should be something which should reflect the true picture. And I think he emphasized on the importance of financial reporting. In the, in the financial state. Our deep dive topic for today, which uh, will be taken by uh, Ms. Madhavi Devdar, is based on uh, lease accounting standard. Last year, that is in FY20, we saw a very, a fairly complex accounting standard kicking in. In the, uh, uh, it's compulsory for companies who are uh, based on IFRS converged Indian accounting standards. The, the, the background of this standard, basically, if I can spare a couple of minutes on uh, why is it that, you know, this lease accounting underwent change. A few years back, the chairman of International Accounting Standards Board, so IFRS, that is International Financial Reporting Standards, are issued by uh, a body called International Accounting Standards Board uh, based out of London. So the chairman of IISB, he was traveling from New York to London on uh, a flight and he realized that the flight that he was occupying, it was not on the balance sheet of the airline company. Okay. So the airline company apparently had taken the, uh, the aeroplane on lease, on operating lease, and it was not owning the, the aeroplane. And that triggered a thought in his mind that why is it that such critical asset now for an airline company aeroplane is a fairly you know it's the most critical asset so why is it that the most important asset of the company is not on the balance sheet of the of the company and therefore shouldn't this uh, accounting issue be fixed because uh, if my core asset is not being captured in the balance sheet and my core liability towards the owners of uh, the uh, you know, aeroplane is not captured in my liability side. Is it really uh, depicting the true picture, the true state of affairs of the of the balance sheet? And therefore, he embarked on a, a, a new project for lease accounting. So prior to this, what we were doing, and of course, even under the IGAP, the non-IFRS converts uh, standards, the accounting for lease is based uh, based on a classification. So all lease arrangements are classified into operating and finance lease. So all the leases which are classified as operating leases, and this is not a choice. This is based on a judgment. So we saw that in IRFC's case, all the assets that it lends to, it leases out to uh, the railways, to the Ministry of uh, Railways. Uh, there is a buyout uh, at the end of the tenure. So if that's the case, generally it will be a finance lease. The, the arrangement will be classified as finance lease. And if it's not the case, so for example, if I'm leasing out an office premise for, uh, let's say, a term of three years. Since last eight years, the ISB embarked on this uh, lease uh, accounting project. Basically, they wanted to harmonize. They want wanted to. They, they didn't want lessees, okay, to distinguish between operating lease and finance lease. The the end objective was that all leases, which are fairly on long term basis, should be captured in the balance sheets of the lessees, okay, the companies who are taking the lease, uh, the assets on lease. And therefore, this project, it was a project which uh, was undertaken together with the US GAAP uh, uh, standard setter, that is uh, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board. And therefore, the US GAAP also, as we speak, has been amended. In India, we have, uh, since we base in days on IFRS, the IFRS equivalent, that is IFRS 16, has translated into in days 116. 
So that's a bit of a background to this uh, this topic for today, lease accounting. Uh, with that little background, I would hand over Madhavi uh, Dev. Good morning, all of you. Welcome, Thanks. Madhavi. It's really wonderful. Uh, you have so much practical experiences in so many sectors, and you also selected a uh, pain sector and the leaders annual report Asian paints when the Indigo paints IPO is on and all the community uh, is looking at deep dive into uh, the various uh, sectors and accounting standards. I would like to acknowledge Santosh Malar. He is a uh, author of uh, several books on financial reporting accounting standards. And he has uh, selected uh, especially to deep dive into real life companies into across all the sectors. Every time he selects at least uh, three sectors and uh, several annual reports and deep dive behind uh, annual reports and uh, quarterly results and the reports and demystifies all of them and simplifies it. So it is available to all the experts and participants who desire to share knowledge uh, on continuously on an ongoing basis on various sectors and companies. Great work, Santosh. Great books uh, you have been writing. And uh, keep writing, keep updating, and really wonderful to you uh, to have you and uh, take major initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Manoj sir and Santosh for giving me the opportunity to uh, share my views on uh, the subject, financial reporting on uh, index uh, 116. As you know, uh, this standard has been notified by NCA on 29th of March 2019. So from uh, 1st April 2019, that's from financial 2019-20, this standard is effective. So all of us have experienced learnings, issues and challenges uh, as an implementer or as an accountant or as an auditor on financial reporting on this standard. We have experienced the uh, learnings and challenge, uh, face challenges and issues of the standard for last more than one year now. So this standard is uh, very crucial because uh, it has a wide applicability in the sense that uh, most of the companies have operating expenditure on their books. One of the study made by the uh, big four, they have stated that uh, about uh, 38 companies of big size, they have around 1 lakh 8,000 crores of operating these expenses in their books uh, for the financial year 2018-19. This standard also affects EBITDA because if you know this standard, the rent expenditure uh, is, there are finance cost and uh, uh, depreciation on right of use asset in the books. So EBITDA that is earning before interest tax depreciation also undergoes a change. Another thing is the standard has superseded uh, previous standard index 17 and there are uh, drastic changes as far as recognition measures and disclosures principles are concerned. It has brought uh, new uh, line items in your balance sheet like ROE asset, right of use asset, lease liabilities. There are additions to the notes to accounts like uh, uh, items also ROE depreciation, finance cost on leases. Uh, the company has to make the changes to their chart of accounts by inserting new account codes and uh, a lot of system updation or they have to go for some automation of the system for accounting uh, these lease standards. If they have a lot of they have heavy expenditure on leases, operating lease expenditure. So for studying any, for doing any financial reporting of any accounting standard, basically we study the scope, recognition, measurements, disclosures of the standard. So uh, what I've decided in a similar way, I will deal with the recognition, measurement, disclosure, transition provisions of the standard. And I will also see the uh, live examples, some extract of annual reports of some uh, leading corporates. And also I will share my views and ex my experience on uh, lease, ac lease accounting. So by dealing with the uh, any standard, we see the key aspects like uh, scope, recognition, measurement, disclosure, case studies, and transition provision. Uh, so for index 116 uh, leases, uh, what, is, what is scoped out and what is scoped in is like scoped out things are uh, leases to explore for or use minerals, oil, nature, natural gas, 
etc because uh, we have different standard for this which is in this 106 service concession agreement these are like built to operator cases for uh, constructing highways tolls uh, and all a license for intellectual intellectual property granted by leases this is also scoped out rights held by lessee under certain licensing arrangement is also uh, scoped out when we come to recognition exclusion normally we go in the uh, manner first we define scope then recognition disclosure case studies and transition but today i am taking transition approaches first because when we uh, implement this standard, especially when it is new, like 116 has come from 142019, or when we uh, uh, travel from IGAP to INDES, we first see what are the transitional approach. Means how we are tran going to transit from old gap or uh, old standard to new standard. So here the standard has provided some options to the lazy. That is, uh, one is restructively to each period of accounting presented, applying in this eight accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. That is, uh, so to say, uh, it is uh, exactly like first time adoption. We reopen the uh, first uh, first day of the uh, previous year. Like suppose you are reporting for 2019-20. So uh, we have three balance sheets. Uh, impact of uh, lease accounting on 1-4-2018. Uh, comparatives of 2018-19. And uh, reporting on 2019-20. So one approach is a retrospective. And another is a modified retrospective approach. In first retrospective approach, it is a desirable approach because it gives the comparatives of the figures of what we are reporting in 2019-20. In 2019-20, uh, uh, this retrospective, I have taken a, uh, this annual extract of three leading companies. One of them is Asian Paints, other one is Sun Pharma Limited, and third one is uh, Tata Capital Financial Services. So uh, this Asian Paints, which is uh, known for its uh, like diligent uh, financial reporting, they have adopted this standard. Uh, they have taken this uh, transition approach because uh, this is most desirable approach because it is it gives uh, comparatives for your reporting of 2019-20. Uh, yeah, if you see, uh, they have given the, the note on effect of adopting in this 116 leases, changes in accounting policies and disclosures. Uh, just to give you a brief on this, uh, I have audited Asian Paints for a couple of years. So Asian Paints has uh, its head office and some eight, nine plants uh, as their own. Rest of the there around 250 to 300 uh, depots or warehouses. Then their signature stores like the showrooms, which we have at Bandra in uh, Mumbai, Kolkata and Delhi also they have. And their uh, regional administrative center all are on lease. If you know, in 2018-19, they have around 235 crores of lease standards, uh, lease expenditures in their books. So to account... Uh, to go for this retrospective approach is a quite a task because we have to put a lot of time and resources for applying this standard. So if we uh, read out that uh, thing, the company has adopted in this 116 leases retrospectively uh, to each prior reporting period presented with effect from 1-4-2019. Indes primarily requires the company as a lessee to recognize at the commencement of the lease a right to use asset and lease liability. See here, if you see in first sentence, to, they have written to each prior reporting period. And if you see down, uh, they have given uh, the effect of adopting Indes 116 on their uh, balance sheet, profit and loss account, and cash flows. They have given uh, what is uh, there as per 2018-19, what uh, changes INDES 116 has made and uh, how it looks when uh, INDES 116 is adopted. So uh, they, uh, if you see, they have uh, there is a change in almost most of the items like property, plant and equipment. It must be because uh, some financial, I think some financial leases must have been identified as a revenue operating leases. Then a uh, new uh, item is coming in right of use asset, the other non current assets. The equity change is because when we, here I'll just uh, give the accounting how it is done. Most of you will be knowing this. Uh, like uh, when, uh, suppose you have a lease for uh, five years of amounting to some uh, 20, 20 lakhs, one crore. The present value is computed on day one. Suppose it is a 62 lakhs. 
Then at that 62 lakhs, uh, the ROE is booked, ROE is accounted, and the second effect, ROE to uh, right of use to lease liability. So uh, ROE is uh, amortized over the uh, lease period, uh, mostly on straight line basis or as appropriate as per its use. And uh, lease is uh, unwinded, means the finance cost is added, the actual rent payments are deducted, and then uh, at the end of the uh, period, uh, the lease liability is also zero, ROU is also depreciated, and what comes in your books is rent is uh, accounted through lease liability accounting, and depreciation on ROU comes into your uh, profit and loss account, and finance cost comes. So that is basic, this is basic accounting of this. So uh, suppose uh, like uh, on 1-4-2017, the lease has been entered into, so on 1-4-2019, the difference between the carrying value of ROU and lease liability this is accounted in other equity that's why if you see there is a change in other equity also so this lease liability uh, non-current uh, liabilities lease liability defer tax is also coming in because basically finance costs on lease liabilities and ROA depreciation are not tax allowable items uh, the tax allowable item is actual rent rent payments so uh, it gives to the recognition of uh, defer tax liability on balance sheet approach this current liabilities that's how they have given the uh, changes yeah. on revenue uh, from operations also and on cash flows also uh, this is the first method which is a retrospective uh, change they have made right from the beginning if uh, the standard would have been applicable at uh, from the beginning how it would look uh, for 2019 and 20. So another example, uh, we will take uh, Tata Capital Services, what they are doing on 1-4-2019, uh, whatever is the difference between the ROU asset and lease liability, that is credited or debited to the retained earnings. And uh, so the comparatives are not available because in previous year, you will see the rent expenditure only. 1819 is not uh, restated in that case. So, and third approach is on the date of balance sheet, whatever lease liability you are having, you have the ROE asset of that equal amount. And in the remaining period of the lease, the ROE is uh, amortized or depreciated uh, equally uh, on straight line basis or uh, most suitable method. So, uh, so we saw this transition approach. Uh, then we'll go to the uh, next uh, slide. Yeah, basically this is a recognition and measurement thing. How we recognize the uh, right of use uh, and lease liability in the books. It is basically the uh, lease, lease payments over the period are accounted at amortized uh, at the present value, and the entry is a right of use to lease liability. And uh, ROE asset is depreciated uh, on state line basis and the lease liabilities, finance costs, is, it is unwinding of interest is done and rent pay payments are uh, accounted. So this is the basic uh, accounting. So here uh, new asset and liabilities are coming into the book. Previously, it was only rent expenditure. So you are recognized the asset and liabilities created out of your lease commitment through the contracts, lease contracts, uh, over the period of tenure, maybe three years, five years or whatever, in the books. So all liabilities and assets are coming into the books. This is the major, as explained by the Santosh, so, uh, even if you have the lease, uh, the commitments towards lease, it was not coming in the books. The, what was coming in the books, only it was only current year expenditure. So these are the new presentation by way of lease liability. So as to uh, on asset side, you have the right to use the asset for that period. And subsequent measurement is uh, accounting the depreciation, accounting finance costs uh, on lease liability. And basically the, uh, this accounting is uh, having the drastic change in the books of leases. As far as lesser, lesser is concerned, there are no major changes in the books of lesser. So this is a presentation in the balance sheet. You have, after the pl property plant and equipment, you have a right of use asset separately disclosed. Then you have lease liability separately disclosed uh, into current and non-current. Then you have interest depreciation on RUU, interest expenses on uh, financial liability, uh, uh, lease liabilities. And uh, as you have, we have seen in previous uh, slides of scope, there is a exemption given for short-term lease which is within 12 months, which is maturing within the 12 months or low value asset 
is basically first to say small asset like laptops office furniture etc so for this asset again the accounting will be done as per the previous accounting only that rate rent expenditure we will be accounting so it will have a, a impact on cash flow also so uh, lease payments are normally considered in the financing activities interest on this is should be consistent with policy election index 7 that is in investment activities operating activities uh, operating activities or financing activities uh, for new leases wherever the disclosure is non cash expenditure like suppose any fair value in, uh, element is there in this so we have to disclose this separately as per the cash flow standard going further see what happens normally uh, when we have implementing or even auditing any standard uh, we give a lot of importance uh, we deploy a lot of time and resources for recognition and measurement principles but uh, somehow in disclosures that much resources we do not uh, deploy and uh, uh, the compliance of financial uh, in financial reporting compliance of disclosure provisions like the compliance of the standard is Uh, done or not done it is not partially done or something so disclosure part is also very important so some paras are there which are dedicated for disclosure purposes para 53 51 to 60 so according to you have to disclose the information in the financial statement this is basically annual financial statement not a financial quarterly financial report. so how you have to give uh, like depreciation charge you have to disclose it separately interest expenses on lease liability you have to uh, show separately under finance cost expenditure related to short term leases like the leases maturing within one year from the mature, from the reporting date but obviously you have an exemption so it will not be covered under index 116 so you have present it separately in the books low value asset is similar what i uh, explained earlier is laptops and office furniture expenditure relating to variable lease payments like uh, based on the Uh, list term change in list term from after the commencement of the lease income from subleasing right of use like suppose i have taken on lease and further down i have subleased it so that income i have the expenditure in the books by way so disclosures in disclosure part uh, we have to show the sublease income separately cash flows out of leases also we have to show separately the movement in the right of use like opening balance additions depreciation any write off of the right of use that also we have to show separately sale and lease back transactions gain and losses carrying amount of rou at the end of the reporting period all these are uh, necessary disclosure requirements if right of use is for uh, investment property as per index 40 that also we have to give that disclosure also uh, like we give for pp uh, i'll share experience about the implementation of this standard is uh, like a lot of work is done in excel sheets which is prone to error so system automation is very much required when the company has a uh, large number of leases because it is very difficult to extract the data from the excel sheets and for reporting purposes and secondly materiality uh, determination like whether to take or each and every lease this accounting should be done as per index 116 or if the materiality should be there because in ifrs they have the materiality uh, if the total value of the contract value like total expenditure on lease for a year is less than 5000 dollar then it is means it is uh, below materiality level you need not uh, do the Uh, lease accounting as per 116 but there is no materiality level given in the index 116 so it is a call taken by the company so we'll go through some few case studies uh, this is a case study basically here the when the contract doesn't specify any period then whether it should be lease accounting should be done as per 116 and if yes then how so this is a live example one of the client which is a private sector oil field operator is having 100 crores of turnover there they have obtained the oil extraction and sale of oil rights from government of india uh, or from previous operators so this lease period is normally 8 to 10 years and uh, they had taken some land on lease which the land around that oil field location just uh, they wanted it for building the temporary offices or plant office or for uh, small roads and all so they were taken mostly from farmers 
so some uh, contracts were agreements were having the period five years or seven years some were not it was a open contract but there it was a containing the clause that the company has a right to use the land till the time it is operating uh, the company is operating on respective oil fields so in this case there is a itfg uh, this is itfg's technical facilitation group indus technical they had a given a clarification when the lessee has a enforceable right to extend the lease beyond the cancellable period uh, like the in this case the company has a uh, enforceable right they can say ki like i want this land till the till i wind up the oil field uh, operations so uh, the end of that oil field operations the lease period is taken till the end of that oil field operations this is one case study the listed company is having uh, diversified businesses they have the company listed company is not a nbfc but it has a nbfc as subsidiaries which are into diversified financial activities they having two floors in uh, commercial complex in south bombay they are paying around 40 lakhs of rent per month and they are uh, having the contracts with uh, the group companies that they will be reimbursed certain amounts toward lease towards uh, other maintenance uh, charges and uh, electricity charges etc but it was not a sublease agreement there was no sublease agreement between the parent company and uh, group company so will it be called as a lease or not so here uh, the main thing is in the uh, lease contracts only the occupancy uh, square feet was mentioned so they will occupy certain 2000 area and the premises was used having some 30000 square feet so this company will occupy 2000 square feet i uh, like that but they had not specified particular the particular area so the standards as an asset the rou asset is typically identified by being explicitly specified in a contract so the this condition was not met here so there was no sublease so otherwise sublease means the group company also has to account it as a lessee lessor will be the group company so that accounting uh, was not required in this case that's what call we had taken after analyzing the lease agreement same case the, the listed company the parent uh, was paying some some towards interest free refundable security deposit to the landlord the effective interest rate for a company is 10 per, 10% so how the security this interest free security deposit should be accounted so normally otherwise we amortize it but in this case uh, if it is for or operating lease expenditure then what we do suppose this 2 crores will account it at present value at uh, one point suppose 5 lakh so 50 lakhs difference we account it as a roi a right of use and uh, then it is uh, depreciated in similar way as a roi uh, here basically uh, the main thing is the discount rate which we are using here labor rate is used for lease if you down you see the lease payments are increased by 2% so labor 2% is taken for the increasing the uh, like acceleration clause we have like that uh, the rent expenditure is increased by 2% every month or every period periodically and suppose interest rate implicit for implicit, implicit interest rate is basically uh, incremental borrowing rate uh, suppose it is 5% then uh, the discounting the discounting rate is very much important because on that basis the recognition measurement of the rou and lease liability is done so here uh, discount rate will remain unchanged this is a main uh, thing uh, in this uh, like assuming the interest rate as how the lease liability is initially measured so here uh, lease payments increase in the lease payment is at the uh, libor rate and discounting it at the unchanged discount rate which is determined at the commencement like that it is so the this lease rate is not changed subsequent lease payments are changed but discount rate is remains fixed this uh, basically it is the cold storage uh, they have uh, the specific cold storage facilities here it is uh, used Uh, so the uh, a limited enters into contract with b limited which grants a limited exclusive right to use specific, specific cold storage facility over a period of time for 4 months a year uh, so it is basically like even if you are using it for a certain period of uh, for a year then whether it will be that the facility you are using by way of paying the lease rent whether it will be identified lease or not so in this case it is identified ki whatever Uh, is significant is economics of the use of the asset for uh, for the company 
because uh, the uh, a limited has a uh, right to control the asset and it is using that right to control the asset by using uh, the rights are more significant to the economics of the use of the asset so it contains the lease the main thrust is the lessee how it is using it is uh, it is more significant to the economics of the use of the asset so it contains the lease even though the it is for the part of the year so this is main thing in this because this is based on different provisions in the this is a very uh, vast standard so on different provision different aspects aspects of the lease this case study is okay uh, great madhavi uh, thanks for a wonderful presentation over your right to call rough case studies when letting us on the scenario